the one day classics are very long you know there are a lot of hours so you need you need to have a big engine you need to have a lot of fuel a lot of reserve so what i've been doing over the september october months through december into the new year i've been training a lot uh with different foods you know and different ride like really long ride durations we train a lot on the on the cobblestones uh, to get the feeling on the on the stones and uh yeah, with the, with the recon that also uh, helped a lot. I prepare myself also with uh, yeah, watching some, uh, some videos of the, of the past. Uh, mentally, yeah, it's, uh, it's like a big war, you know, so you have to uh, charge the batteries as much as you can. Listen to the other boys with the experience. So they, they, they told us a little bit what it's about. So we can <laughs> take their advice and see where we're gonna get. Basically, to prepare a race like this takes much more energy than people in the outside world uh, uh, would think. Um, it comes down to which tire will you ride, which tire are you allowed to ride on which wheel. The combination of is also important. On cobblestones you need to run uh, much lower pressures. For example, in a race like Milan San Remo, you're going to have in your tire between uh, 8 and 9 bar normally. For Paris-Roubaix you're going to have maybe 5 bar or 5.5 bar pressure and for this you need a bigger tire, you need more volume of air otherwise a smaller tire would easily get a flat tire, you know like puncture uh, quickly as soon as you got to the cobblestones. The handlebars, uh, you can't see it now because it's under the tape, but we have a gel uh, substance from uh, Physic, a chain ring selection for the gear ratio. Basically, the, the function of the, of the inside chain ring in Paris-Roubaix is to catch the chain in case it falls off on the bumpy roads of the cobbles, you know model of frame can you use will you use the, the the distance between tube and tire because it's dirty uh, on the road and the dirt could stuck in between tire and frame the synapse is comfortable it has more more give in it more flex in it. it it takes a lot of the the punishment out of the road it's that you know you, you don't really want to be feeling through the body because that's what wears you down in Paris Bay hitting every sector and just having to, you know, to really grind it out and, and fight with yourself, fight with the bike to make it, make it go forward. So they need a bike that's going to give them some comfort, you know, and this, this bike combined with the, with the bigger tubular, I think uh, is a perfect combination uh, for the cobblestones. I think as a rider you learn many race, uh, many lessons from a race like Paris-Roubaix. You learn how to, to preserve your energy early on. Um, when I say early on, I mean the first three, four hours. It's not really early on. It's <laughs> <laughs> the lesson, yeah, it's, it's like, it's a really honest race actually. It's uh, for sure you have to have also a little bit of luck, but in the end of the day, everybody has a flat tire or uh, a crash somewhere. After all the, the Roubaix I did, I uh, learned, or actually already after two or three I learned, right, that this is a very special race and it's a race where you never should give up, just like never. Your whole body is shaking and afterwards your fingers are, you cannot, you can, yeah, can't grab anything because your fingers are so painful and um, yeah, I think uh, it's the worst. Uh, Worst thing to do in cycling, but yeah, I'm good in it and uh, that's why I like it. Very brutal, very brutal and um, for me one of the nicest sports events of the year. Not only cycling events, like sport events. I'm not Cancellara, I can't say I'm the, I'm the best at riding on cobblestones, but what I have discovered over the years is that, okay, if you don't have a nice technique on the open road, 
You fight the bike, but the bike still goes forward. You push down on the pedals, the bike goes forward. In the, in the cobbles of Roubaix, if you push down on the pedals, the bike also goes down. It goes down into every rut, into every, every hollow between every stone, and you, you go nowhere. So to get into the sector in a good position, and then to relax, and to just try and float over the stones. <laughs>on the cobblestones it's like it's yeah go a little bit more smooth uh, you have to change your position on the bike a little bit some guys likes to like to ride it in a drop some guys like to ride it on top of the handlebar um, it's all about you know the weight balance you know like um, putting yourself in a good place behind the bottom bracket all that sort of thing so but everybody has their own their own like small little I think it's not secrets but small little things to to go over the cobbles the cobblestones never change. In the 22 editions that I've done it, basically uh, you need good, sensible preparation and a lot of luck. You go out there and you hit the cobbles and you just go. But if you want to, if you want to be successful, I would say the most important thing is that you just have, you have to have the balls to do it.